So in the last video, we talked about classes and objects. And in this video, I wanna go over what constructors and init blocks are. And uh, let's just jump right into it. It's much easier if I just show you an example. So the first thing we are going to do is go to our source file and create a new Kotlin class. And that's gonna just be class and we're gonna call it coffee machine. And to create a constructor, all you have to do is create a pair of parentheses at the end of the class name. And inside here, you add what values you require for this class to work. So we will start with the coffee in machine, and that's gonna be a Boolean. And then we will also write the kind of coffee. So we'll just write coffee, and that's gonna be of type string. So adding this underscore right before the name is one of the conventions you can use for constructors, but there are many, so you can just pick whichever one suits you best. But I'm just gonna use this one for now. And right below, we can actually create these values. So we're gonna write var coffee in machine, and that's going to equal the coffee in machine from above. And we're gonna do the same thing for the kind of coffee. So var coffee is going to equal coffee. And then we're gonna create a very simple function that will tell us what kind of coffee is in the machine if there is coffee in the machine. So we will write function coffee function, just to keep things simple. It's much better if you have a more descriptive name, but for this example, this should suffice. So inside here, we will create an if statement, which will say, if coffee in machine, print line, you have coffee in your coffee machine. Else we'll write print line, your coffee machine needs coffee to work correctly. And with that being said, we can go back to our main activity and we can instantiate this coffee machine by typing value coffee machine equals coffee machine. And this time it's going to ask us to add a few values. The first one being, is the coffee in the machine? We can write, let's just write true to keep things simple. And then it's gonna tell you what kind of coffee. So we're gonna write uh, Kenya, coffee from Kenya. And then if we click on play, of course I messed up because we have to call the function. We'll write coffee machine dot coffee function. And then we can click play again. And it will say you have Kenya beans in your coffee machine. That is because we do have coffee inside and it is of type Kenya. And if we change this to false, it will say our coffee machine needs coffee to work correctly. And that is the very basic use of the constructor. You can just add values that need to be initialized as you create the object. And I also want to show you what an init block is and how to use it because it is also very, very nice to have. And let's pretend you have more logic that you want to enter and that doesn't really fit into your constructor. Well, with the init block or the initializer block, we can actually add a lot of logic that we cannot add in the constructor. And that can simplify a lot for us. So let me give you an example of how we can use that. To create an initializer block, all you have to do is type in the keyword init and inside here, this will act as a secondary constructor. So immediately after this has been called, we will have this right here that will be called before any other function inside the class. So actually we can just copy and paste this here. And that means once this object has been created, this will be printed immediately without even having to call the function. And let me show you what I mean by that. Let's delete that function. And inside here, we can actually delete that part as well. So with the init block, we have added this check that if the coffee is in the coffee machine, you'll say you have this coffee in the coffee machine, otherwise your coffee machine needs coffee to work correctly. So now if we click on play, it says your coffee machine needs coffee to work correctly. And it's never used, but everything is initialized and everything is processed. So this gets called before any of the functions and so does this, and this can act as a secondary constructor, although Kotlin does have secondary constructors, and I won't go into that because they are seldomly used. But for now, I would say the most important aspects are this constructor part right here and the init block that you can use at any time you want. And you can even have several. And you can insert something as simple as checking whether A is bigger than B and then printing out the value down here. So to sum it up, initializer blocks are just nice to have for the logic that you cannot fit into your primary constructor. And you can add a lot of code in here, whatever you want to start off your object. And there's actually one more thing I want to show you that I actually forgot in the previous video. And this is regarding classes and objects. So we're just gonna add a print line statement or a function that says print. So we're gonna do function print message. And inside here, we're just gonna type print line and we are going to interpolate. We're gonna write coffee and add 
the coffee down here. Then we can go to our main activity. And what I didn't show you in the past video is that you can actually change the values from outside the coffee machine class just by appending its name to the original value. So coffee machine dot coffee, and we can equal that to Honduras. And then down here we will write coffee machine dot print message. And just to show you that that changes the value from within the class, we will do it under. So we'll write changed value and we can click on play. So as you can see here, it says coffee Honduras and then coffee equals changed value. So it's really nice that you can change the value from outside the class just by appending to it the value that you want to change. And just make sure that it is a global variable because if you have the private keyword, it will not let you access that variable. So it is very important you have that as a normal variable. But I believe I covered everything you need to know for the basic usage of initializer blocks and constructors. In the next video, I want to discuss getters and setters in Kotlin. But as always, thanks for watching and I will see you guys later.